every leader is a leader of change now. Mm. I mean, you can't not be changing because as you said, to stay relevant, to have a sustainable business, you know, it's running in a different way because we've got some people from home, you know, working from home and some in the office and our, and our customers want a different experience and whatever it may be. So creating relevance and sustainability in your business requires change and transformation. You are now listening to the Highlight Real Builder for Authors, the Going North Podcast. I'm your host, certified self-leadership trainer and author of the best-selling book, Stay the Course, Dom Brightman. And you're going to be getting some goodies today from the guest that's up next. And today on the High Live Real Builder for Authors, known as the Going North Podcast, we got a treat for you today, my friends. A treat for you today. Oh, my goodness. Like your favorite dessert, but this time, instead of it being an actual dessert, imagine it being a leadership cake because we got one heck of an expert for you today, my friends. All the way from the land of down under, aka the future, since at the time of this recording, she's like a good 12 hours ahead of me. Another wonderful lady from the great country of Australia, folks. She is a high performance leadership and coaching expert who's obsessed with possibility. And this wonderful lady right here, she helps leaders to navigate the complexities of globalization, technological advancement, social interconnectivity, massively accelerating change, and multi generational workforce. So if you say that seven times fast, you might get a book in the mail. And with 30 years of experience, over 30 years of experience, she has helped thousands of folks to develop their leadership competence, confidence, and credibility. Three C's, y'all. And she's a bestseller of three books, all on Amazon.com that we're going to put in the show notes when this is over. So let's give it up for the award-winning, super special, awesome, the superhero herself, who is not only stupendous, but also amazing. Stacy Ashley. How you doing today, Stacy? I am doing great. Wow, what an amazing intro. Thanks, Tom. Ah, my pleasure, D. It's usually one of the better parts of the podcast episodes before I go down occasional rabbit holes. <laughs> well, you know, it's great to be here. I'm really looking forward to uh, to seeing what we what we talk about and where we go. Oh yeah, that's right. Don't worry. <laughs> it's always north here <laughs> even if you have to go all the way north around the globe if you're not a flat earther it still leads the north <laughs> uh, but it's not flat earthers it's about the superstar itself so as you know with all introductions you know they're not allowed to be 34 days long along with seven hours so mind filling in any cavities i missed about you stacy Oh, gosh, you know, it's, it's such a big question, isn't it? Like, who are you? And <laughs> tell us everything about you. But no, look, my space is leadership. I, I spent a lot of my career in the in the corporate world in lots of leadership roles. And I saw lots of do's and don'ts there. And I've been really, really lucky to, to create the opportunity to be able to work with, you know, huge numbers of leaders and to and to, I, I think, fill in their gaps in their leadership toolkits, uh, I think it's such an important thing, Dom, to, to really give leaders the opportunity to be successful. And, and I think we can do so much more in that space. And so that's really, I guess, what, what drives me is to, is to help leaders be as successful as they can because the world le- needs leadership. I don't think we're ever going to say, no, no, we've got enough leadership now, stop. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, so that's me. That's, that's really what drives me. Ah, there you go, steering wheel and all. So I'm pretty sure leadership wasn't always the driver. Was it something like, like take us back to the 13 year old Stacey, which was probably like I don't know, eight years ago, and fill us in. Like, did you ever see yourself as like a leadership coach today, or was it something totally different? Uh, it's a, it's an interesting question, isn't it? So uh, I uh, I also happen to be good at math, you know, in in, uh, in school, and and so a lot of my career choices we're around that you know be an accountant be an actuary be lots of those sorts of things and so I did actually qualify as an accountant uh after high school went to university and did that but but when I reflected really I I led my very first team when I was about six years old 
So it's always been there uh, in everything I've done, whether it's been dancing or sport or school or that sort of thing. So yes, I did have a career as an accountant for a while, but it pretty soon became clear that that wasn't going to keep me interested and happy and all of those things over the long term. So leadership's been there the whole time. Ah, that's what I'm talking about indeed. That's what I'm talking about indeed. So from leading a team of fellow kids at the age of six to crunching a bunch of numbers and realizing that people are more interesting than numbers, even though numbers don't talk back sometimes. <laughs> True enough. <laughs> or if they do, it's not, it's not very nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, it's definitely so true. So my goodness. So with the tendencies of a wonderful leader and being able to really develop them over time, what do you probably would recommend two things folks to do to develop themselves into a better leader? Because leadership's a big thing on this podcast only, mm. but those are being big about leadership, but also some other superstar guests in the past, along with yourself too, that we have today. Any two things you recommend folks to do in their journey of leadership, especially when they're starting? I think um, the number one thing I would say is have a look in the mirror, you know, always, because leadership starts with you. So have a look in the mirror. There'll be stuff you like, there'll be stuff you're okay with, and there'll be stuff that maybe you don't like as much. So that's just a massive opportunity. Um, so that would be the first thing is really have a look and, uh, and then decide what you want to do with what you see. And the second thing I think is always be learning. You know, there are people to learn from, there's books to learn from, you know, there's so many opportunities, always, always be learning because as a leader, you need to always have something to offer. That would be my two, you know, quick tips. <laughs> oh, there we go. She's dropping it like it's hot, y'all. I'm telling you, that's right. As a leader, you have to always have something to offer. That's what I'm talking about indeed. That's right. Got to keep yourself abreast. Got to keep yourself relevant. So on that wonderful note, with this wonderful <laughs> Grim Reaper year of 2020, where folks have been forced to basically be hermits and <laughs> have cabin fever, a lot of folks have been able to really turn some of their moments of pain into power. So what's probably been the biggest thing that you've gained through the whole pandemic? Is there something that you may have created new in addition to your wonderful books? Is there something else that may have stuck out to you that you're able to learn a new skill or maybe something you've been able to create? Yeah, I think for me, look, there, there are a couple of things. One is, obviously, there were so many organisations and people that were really challenged, like really challenged, whether it's because their industry was under pressure or their business was under pressure or just their life changed because we had all these restrictions imposed on us. There was risk. There's so much. So I think um, a couple of things for me, I, I was I, in a wonderful position of being able to support people and organisations. And so... I think I felt last year this amazing opportunity to be able to give generously, which, as we know, it feels amazing, you know, <laughs> to be able to give generously to others and support them and help them when they, when they are challenged in some way. Um, so that was huge for me. And is it, is it just another way of expressing leadership, I guess? In terms of learning, um, I think, again, so many opportunities. I mean, we've been doing online you know for a really long time but I think it just took us to a whole new level and so big opportunities for me I spoke at more international conferences last year than I think I've ever spoken to because guess what we couldn't travel there was no cost and so people <laughs> were super keen to get you know hey we can access that Australian speaker market um, so that was huge because um, it just opened the the, the opportunity that perhaps Conference organisers might have gone, oh, I don't really want to pay costs from Australia. So <laughs> last year was, was amazing. Um, but then I think, you know, the, it's, it's for me, it's translated into, you know, opportunities for new ways of supporting leaders because now I think it's so, so clear, Dom, that every leader is a leader of change now. Mm. I mean, you can't not be changing because, as you said, to stay relevant to have a sustainable business you know it's running in a different way because we've got some people from home you know working from home and some in the office and our and our customers want a different experience and whatever it may be so 
creating relevance and sustainability in your business requires change and transformation. So all leaders are leading change and transformation. So that gives rise to a huge amount of opportunity to be able to support them you know, in what are the new skills that they need to be able to do that? How do they support themselves so they can lead long-term systemic change? Because that's what we're talking about. You know, 2019, that is history. <laughs> and we, we're in a new world. And, and so we have, to, we have to up our leadership game so that we can lead in that new world. And so that's where actually my latest book came from, was specifically to address the challenges of, lead, of leaders coming out of the end of 2020 into 2020 into 2021 and so I just think there's there's gosh for me big big learning in terms of how do I support my people how do I get insights into what are their big challenges what do I need to do to up my game so that they can you know feel supported and like I'm equipped you know and and that I'm keeping up so that I can support them to be able to keep up so I think you know, it's just a big roundabout really isn't it <laughs> you just keep turning the wheel for yourself so that you can support others oh yeah that's right the roundabout indeed and it's so true we're all leaders are leaders of change we're leading change here and it's change by default that's the thing it's like you can't avoid change now as a leader you have to go with it like the pandemic forced everybody to make a lot of changes like even not only with meeting planners like, hey, let's get into that Australia market, get Stacey to finally speak at our freaking event after all these freaking years. We've been stalking her on LinkedIn since she was one of the top influencers <laughs> back in 2018. And it's like, finally got her. We don't have to pay for a flight. It's like, oh, man, this is freaking amazing. All the way to a lot of churches that were still being archaic and they didn't want to have screens. and They didn't know what any other social media was outside of Facebook or anything. And they're like, oh. I guess we got to stream online to reach more people. And it's like, yeah, it's everybody who's a leadership. Like <laughs> if you hate change as we all do, well, you have no choice now. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Absolutely. And I think, you know, it's challenging because maybe I'm not great at change myself and now I've got to lead change. Oh my gosh, that, that is, that's a big ask. And so just to expect people to know, like, jump in with both feet and just know how to do it that's asking a lot so so i think you know anything we can do to support leaders to give them ways of of knowing how to lead change giving them skills you know educating them um, giving them feedback all of those things that are going to help them to be more comfortable leading that ongoing change i think is is vital basically Oh, yeah, that's right. I could definitely say that again because it's so true. Well, as with all magical podcasting interviews you've been on, is there a question that you wish you'd be asked more often? I don't think so. I think I, I, I kind of find it, it, everyone's got their own little slant and, and I think there's no, there's no one question or no perfect question. I think it's really just about you know, share, sharing information that can be helpful and uh, I think, you know, actually, you know, the, the one thing that, that I think is such an important, I don't know whether it's a question, but one thing that, that I think is really key is when I, when I talk about leadership, it doesn't just, it's not limited to just people who are leading other people. Like leadership is, comes in all forms. You know, you can lead a program of work or you can have a big portfolio or you can lead an area of expertise maybe you're like the premier thinker in that in that space or one of the the thought leaders and then of course there's this whole self-leadership thing you know so your leadership may be it's about it's about you that's that's the sum total of your leadership and you're super happy with that um, and I think it's really important for, for everyone to recognize that they all everyone has a role in leadership even if it's just how you show up every day that's you leading you um, and so I think we've got to get beyond this concept that leadership is about only people leading other teams of people. It's, it's much more extensive and pervasive and we all have a role in it. And so it's not a question, Dom, but I think it's something that's really important for people to recognize. Oh yeah, definitely. You can say that again, because self-leadership, that's so freaking important. Kind of 
I've got to say self-leadership as the next level motivation where it's like, okay, there's motivational speakers out there, but you ever heard of a self-leadership speaker where it's like, hey, the onus really has to belong on you. It's like we have to wake up in the morning, look ourselves in the face in the mirror every day and be like, hey, I got to do this thing I decide to do. Do I become a couch potato today? Do I become an office chair potato today? Or do I go out there and do something positive that will benefit my fellow human being here? Like really just realizing that, hey, we have the power to make some good things happen. Yeah, totally. And uh, I remember this question uh, that I heard a couple of years ago, and it's really stuck with me, which is, um, you know, for, for, for you to ask yourself, what am I doing today that is worth sacrificing a day of my life? Yeah. And it's like, because you know what, it's, it's my day and it's up to me to make it count, you know, so that's me leading me. And that doesn't mean you have to go out and change everything about the world today. It might be you just have a really enjoyable day, but you appreciate it and you notice it and you make that choice for yourself, recognizing that's a choice I made for me. That's me leading me. Um, and, I, and so I think it's such an important thing for people to recognize that what they get out of every day is about them. They decide. They choose. That's right. I'm glad you brought up that point, too, because some folks may be like, oh, I got to change the world. Oh, I don't have a title, but I can really do nothing like, hey, like leadership ain't about the title. You don't have to change and fix all the world's problems because, well, one, all the world's problems aren't yours. So it's like <laughs> that's the one yeah. thing too. <laughs> like trying to fix stuff that's been around for decades and generations. It's like, um, let me just start on my square, my own neighborhood first. <laughs> like, let me not yeah, change, take on the whole darn world. <laughs> yeah, as I say, start where you are and do what you can, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's like, man, it's like, oh yeah, let me take on global warming. Okay, that's <laughs> cool. All right, that's cool. Like, all right, get a electric car whatever like drink more water and like use less plastic i guess like do some stuff like that right on your square don't just go around being like one of the classic ultra religious dogmatic folks and beating people over the head with pamphlets saying hey you're killing the earth here just uh starting with something small yeah yeah absolutely because everyone makes a difference in their own way so you know just choose that's right indeed that's right indeed so my goodness so in addition to being a fellow self-leadership expert and the fact that you've been doing this for decades on end and still alive and well and probably even haven't even really hit your stride yet since you're still getting all these wins, you have this wonderful magic three keys to strategic leadership, which is something that's even rarely covered here. So mind sharing those three keys with the magical listeners. Sure. So for me, when I talk about leadership, I think there are three three key dimensions. One we've talked about, which is you've got to first lead yourself. That's kind of, it's kind of the ticket to the game. First lead yourself. The second one is to lead your tribe, you know, the people around you. And some people's tribes are bigger than others. That's okay. Your tribe is, you know, the people you interact with, the people you have influence with. It could be your family. It could be um, your work colleagues. It could be, I don't know, the footy club where you where you volunteer and that comes together that's your tribe and so that's another dimension of your leadership and then the third dimension of your leadership is your world you know the world in which you operate and again that might be just around your organization but it could be broader than that it could be of course your family unit and your community it could be the industry it could be I don't know the economy the country you know uh, depending on on who you are and and how broad your sphere of operation is but you know those three things as leaders even as, as a leader of self you, you have impact in all of those spaces and so you you need to be aware of that and and think about you know how am I contributing in each of those dimensions of leadership self tribe and world and what if anything might I like to do differently so that I'm having the kind of impact that I am really happy about uh self tribe and world yes indeed Woohoo! that's what I'm talking about that's right pyramids everywhere y'all triangles everywhere that's right 
That's right. Three magical points, y'all. That triad, folks. That's right. That's right, indeed. Yes, indeed. Freaking love it because it's so darn true when you think about it. It's like, hey, we first lead ourselves and then basically eventually lead a tribe of folks. And then once you have that vibe that attracts a great tribe, then that tribe will then go out and change the world for the better and not better. Love it. Absolutely. And and it's not do it all at once, do it all today. It's just, it's a, it's, it, it's a journey, you know. It's for all of us. We, we I think that the thing is we, we chip away at it. We, we make little changes. We make little contributions. They grow over time and, you know, and, and you hear about sometimes, I, and I love this, Dom, is you hear about something that you might have done or said, you know, five years or 10 years ago, and, and someone will come back to you and they'll say, hey, do you remember when we had that conversation about the what, you know, whatever it was, and they go, you know, I went away and I thought about that and then I made this decision or I took this action or it was really important to me. And so they went on and they did something that was amazing. Um, and you, and so you have this this impact on people and you don't even realise and that's why for me it's so important that we are conscious of how we show up and how we're leading ourselves because we're having impacts on the people and the world around us all the time and wouldn't it be great to know that something I did today you know in five or ten years time I, I find out that that was really important to somebody and it made us such a big difference and and that's how we inspire people and we influence people and we have impact and that's the whole leading possibility for me you know is we create opportunity and options and potential and you know and the future because of how we show up and and how we are leading today yeah that's right i could definitely say that again because it's so darn true i still have memories from years ago heck even with my mentor having coffee one morning where he mentioned that i should stop being a consumer and be a producer and just that and that even happened my god wow looking back that was 20 15 that was six years ago yeah so yeah moments stick with people moments stick with people yeah they totally do yeah that's right so you too folks you have a super glue moment waiting to happen with somebody it'll stick to them like super glue never to leave heck maybe even like gorilla glue it'll stay in someone's head for a long time <laughs> Absolutely. And people remember the story. They remember the moment, you know, where they were, what they were doing. And they can, and, and then they turn that into their story and, and they share that with somebody and, you know, and so on. And it compounds and it, yeah, it just makes an amazing difference. That's right. That's right. That AD, that amazing difference indeed. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Well, we're coming down to the magical question out of respect for your time and hopefully to avoid some crazy weather over here in the magical US of A is that if you were to wake up tomorrow and you were 25 again, but this time in the current year of 2021 with all of your knowledge and experience, what advice would you give to yourself? Trust your gut. <laughs> that would be my advice. I think... You know, we, we spend a lot of time uh, as we, you know, in our in our different parts of our life, second guessing ourselves, trying to do the right thing, whatever the measure of that might be. I think we need to learn to tap into our intuition more, to trust our gut, trust our heart, and really, again, kind of step into our personal leadership because it's trying to lead us into into knowing and being and doing good so yeah that's what i would say trust your gut oh yeah there we go trust your gut that's right your gut knows y'all that's right your gut knows indeed that's right even if you rub it like your belly like a genie like it knows ask it for <laughs> trust your gut Absolutely. And, and you know what? You're, you're, you're so true. I, I studied embraining a few years ago and it is trust, like ask your gut, get yourself into a beautiful balanced uh, state and, uh, and ask your gut the question, like, 
what's important? What should I be taking action on? And you know what? If you, if you allow it to, it will share that info with you. Woohoo! That's right. Hold my belly right now. Be like, all right, good. You got some knowledge. Share with me. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so good. Yep. That'll be a nice visual to stick with you. Like, yep, listeners probably like Dom's at it again. <laughs> it was crazy analogies. But hey, it's good stuff. That was good stuff indeed. And it's so good. I'm pretty sure listeners want to learn more, keep up with all the stuff that you're doing. For those who want to do so and keep up with all that the sensational Stacy's doing and buy some copies of your books and share them with the friends, neck maybe even a cactus. What's the best way to, for folks to do so? Oh, uh, so the books are on Amazon. In whatever your local market is so just uh look up stacy ashley and uh, as an author and and you'll find that i'm on linkedin of course and uh and my website is stacyashley.com so pretty easy to find well there you have it folks two first names baby stacy ashley and all be in the show notes baby i'll tell you check it out buy all three copies of her book change your life i'm telling you You'll wake up and you'll be like, man, I'm in a room full of coins because it changed my life. It'll be great. And keep up with all the stuff that she's doing indeed. That's right, indeed. She's got a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of wisdom. Because she probably only share like maybe 3% of it. So if you want to get closer to that 100%, you might even get close to, I don't know, let's go with 45% maybe when you pick up those books and read them. Definitely check them out like a library book indeed. So any parting words before we close up shop, Stacy? I think just remember that you are a leader. So what kind of leader do you want to be? Thanks a bunch for listening to this podcast episode. Hope you really enjoyed it. Be sure to subscribe to this show if you haven't already, because more greatness is coming your way. And if you're so inclined, be sure to share with at least three other people in your network. So that way more folks can catch the fire that is on the Going North podcast. Keep winning at life and advance others to advance yourself.